Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Liberty Worship Center this morning. Uh, we welcome those who are watching as well uh, on their TVs this morning or their computers, whichever it may be. Uh, Father, we uh, come to you this morning, Lord. We ask your blessing upon this house, O oh Lord. We ask that your word, O oh Lord, would go forth, Lord. We know it will not return void. Lord God, we ask for your anointing upon the speaker this morning, Lord, uh, upon those, Lord, who are leading the children, Father, uh, upon everything here, Lord, that the instruments, Lord, during worship, Lord, would just ring to you, O oh Lord, and the praises of your people would come forth from us, O oh Lord. And we give you glory and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Uh, I forgot to have everybody stand this morning, so if you could stand, give this uh, shout to the Lord this morning, and then Miss Lori's going to come. Hallelujah. All right, you may be seated. Thank you. Good morning. Well, we're all excited. It's Fellowship Sunday. We will be having our fellowship meal after service today. Uh, the menu includes teriyaki chicken or mango salsa chicken, a rice, mixed vegetables, and a delicious dessert. So we're hoping that everybody stays. We'll have a great time, great fellowship. There's also a donation jar in the lobby for those who would like to donate to cover the cost of the meals. We would appreciate that. Um, also, uh, after the uh, meal today, we will be having a leadership meeting. And so look for meeting minutes to come out during the week so you can stay up with what's happening here at Liberty Worship Center. Um, we um, have our Wednesday night Bible study at 7 p.m. Uh, this is a great time. We just start with a time of worship, then we go into our study, and we have a great discussion with our church family. So please try to make it out. It's great to have a face-to-face -face during Bible study so that we can discuss things and encourage each other. But if you can't make it out and you want to watch online, you can see it on Facebook Live. So again, that's 7 p.m. on Wednesday. We also have the young adults and youth and children's group that um, also meet at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. So if you know any uh, children, teenagers, please invite them out. They have a great time. There are different classes. The younger children's class goes up to about 13, and then the older ones can meet in the, in the uh, Ignite room. It's a wonderful time for them. They encourage each other, lift each other up, and just study the word together. So please invite them out for Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Next Saturday, we have the Men's um, Promise Keepers Conference. I'm sorry, Friday and Saturday. It's Friday night, I think 7.30 to 10.30, and Saturday from 10 to 3.30, something like that. Um, if you have not signed up yet, please do so on the link that we sent you. I can also send you the link again where you can see Greg Warner. If you want more information, you could also email lwc at pa.net. It's $20, and lunch is being served. So if you know any men, please invite them out. We'll have a wonderful time. Also on Saturday, our women's breakfast is taking place. That's at 8.30 at Sanders Square in Fairfield. So any women, please come out. We have a wonderful time encouraging each other, praying for each other's families. So please either let Lori Spence know, or you can email the church again if you're coming, lwc at pa.net. Also this evening, there will be no evening prayer. Since we're here late today, we'll, we'll be resuming that next week. Um, if you have a, a praise or a praise report or a prayer request, please fill out the cards on the back of your chairs and put them in the box at the back of the church. And we'll make sure that you get on the email list for the week and your prayer request will go on that. Uh, if you have any questions about Liberty Worship Center, you could visit uh, our website, lwcff.org, or our Facebook page at Liberty Worship Center Fairfield, PA. If you're a guest today, please fill out the welcome cards on the back of the chairs so that we can stay connected with you. We won't send you a bunch of emails, but we would like to stay connected. And now we will have the children's message with Ms. Tracy Paul. Thank you. All right, we're continuing our Faith Over Fear series. And we talked about, last week, we talked about Joshua sent the spies in, and they um, were hidden by Rahab. And um, so now we're at a point where Joshua is ready to go in and take over the city. We've got a whole new group of God's people. These are not the people who were in slavery in Egypt. Those people have all died in the wilderness, and Moses is no longer there. He died as well, and now Joshua is leading the people, 
And these people are willing to follow Joshua. And so Joshua was wondering, okay, Lord, you know, I sent the spy in. I know what the lay of the land is like. How do you want me to go in and capture the city? Now, he could have come up with a, probably a very good plan that could have gone in and captured the city, but he wanted to know what God's plan was. And so then he saw this man standing there, and he had a sword, and he says, who are you? Are you an enemy or are you a friend? And the, um, he said, I am God's messenger, the angel said. I am the commander of God's army. And so Joshua fell down on his knees, and he said to the angel, tell me what God wants me to do. So again, Joshua wants to go in God's power, not in his own power. So the messenger gives the, the battle plan to Joshua, and Joshua's like, okay. He goes, and he gives the battle plan to his warriors and his fighters. And he says to them, God has given us the city of Jericho, but we must do what he said to do. Very important. Now, inside the city of Jericho was Rahab. So we remember Rahab last week. She was the one who hid the two spies. And she made a deal with, God, with the two spies. She says, listen, because I've hidden you and I've protected you, I want you to protect me and my family when you come in to attack the city. And so they told her to hang the rope outside of her window. And anyone who was inside of her house at the time of the attack would be saved. So Rahab's inside the city. She knows God's people are outside. And she's waiting to see what happens. Are they going to remember her? Was she scammed? She doesn't know. She's just waiting. And so as she was waiting, she began to see God's people walk around the city. So they walked around the city one time, and then they went back to camp. That's interesting. And then the next day, she saw them again. They walked around the city one time. No one said a word. They just walked around the city. They went back to camp. The third day, they walked around the city again. And Rahab's probably watching, thinking, what is going on? Now, how many of you have seen Veggie Tales, The Wall of Jericho? It's like one of my favorites because those little French peas, and I can't do the accent, but they're up on the wall and they're taunting God's people. You silly little Israelites, they said. Do you think walking around the wall can make them fall? Well, you know, I don't think people of Jericho were up on the walls taunting because the Bible tells us that they were full of fear. And when you're full of fear, you're not usually taunting your enemy, right? So they're probably in there going, what in the world? They're probably totally freaked out. They're just walking around the wall. I don't get it. So they walked around the wall for six days, one time. Nobody said a word. But then... On the seventh day, they walked around the walls of Jericho, not once, but seven times. And they were blowing their trumpets. And finally, when Joshua gave them the command, everyone began to shout. And as they began to shout, the great wall around Jericho crumbled. That was God's battle plan. That was his plan. The city was taken down not by a strong army fighting, but by God's mighty power. Okay? So, faith over fear. This time, God's people chose to put their faith in God's plan, even if it might not have seemed like the best plan. In fact, this plan could have seemed pretty dumb, right? Right, Ron? That's dumb, you know? I can just hear the people saying that, you know? But you know what? They chose to believe and put their faith in God's plan because they knew that he was going to give them the city, okay? So the ones that were in fear, 
for the ones inside the city because they knew how powerful God's people's God was. Okay, they had seen, and they're just in there sitting ducks. And so um, we want to just be encouraged. You know, Joshua, again, he wanted to do it God's way. And if we're willing to do that, then put our faith in God. We know that he has the battle plan already worked out, and all we have to do is follow what he tells us to do. So we're going to continue next week with this story and um, be another Faith Over Fear lesson. So um, give it to Jeff. Thank you, Tracy. Um, I understand that you can't do the French accent, but, man, you had Ron down, like, right on there. So <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. That's dumb. No. <laughs> I do want to go ahead and, and emphasize uh, something that Gail said. The uh, men's conference is coming weekend, Friday evening, Saturday morning. Uh, encourage you. Come, invite your friends. Promise Keepers, for those of us who've been around for a while, um, is an amazing organization. Years ago, they would have a half a dozen or so stadium events um, throughout the country during the summertime months, um, and there would be 40, 60,000 men that would gather in these stadiums to, to praise and worship God. And it was a powerful time. Um, for those of us who, who know me well, we, we still get together, a small group of us, um, on Fridays that came out of that, that, that meetings because of it. So again, I encourage you to, uh, if you have the time, if you have the opportunity, uh, to participate. Uh, Greg? Amen. Everybody, each one ask one. That's a good one. Cool. Um, I do want to just, before uh, we lose the folks at, uh, online and uh, get busy with lunch, we have lunch this afternoon, um, please, uh, even if you didn't come prepared, uh, we'd love to have you stay around and, and fellowship with us. Um, and thank you to Michelle and crew um, for uh, we are being COVID-minded and that we're not, usually we do potlucks. We're trying to limit the uh, number of interactions and people getting their own food and whatnot, so we thank uh, Michelle and her crew there, too. Um, before we go ahead into our time of giving, uh, I want to let you know we will have a time of prayer after the cameras have been shut off for those of us who are here, so I um, encourage you to uh, be ready for that. But uh, I want to share one thing before we go into, the, into uh, our worship set and, and uh, our offering. Friday, oh no, it was Thursday, was Betsy's birthday. Bets for those of you who don't know, is my wife. Um, and so we had done something. We had gone into Frederick, and uh, being the loving husband, I sat outside in the car while she shopped. Um, <laughs> no, hey, shopping um, next to the flu is like my favorite thing. Um, so, but I'm, I'm sitting out in the car uh, right in front of the store, and clouds are getting dark, getting ominous. I mean, you can see a storm is coming. People are going in, going out, going out. And then the skies open up, and it just dumps. And it was so, the thing that struck me, and you see this in where the Lord shows you cool things, the doors that have the electric doors, people would come to the doors, the doors would open, they'd go, oh, oh no, 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 man, it's gone. And they'd back up and they'd go inside. Until this one little girl comes out. She's probably, I'd say, maybe five at the most. She comes out, the doors open up, and she got all wide-eyed and smiling. She's like, this is so cool. She went running out in the rain, and she went running back. You, I, I guarantee you, mom's in there going, hey, get out of the room. She's in the room. We need to be like that. We need to be like that with the things of the Lord. Um, what a, there is an innocence, there's a purity that exists in children um, that we need to honor and we need to replicate and model in our own lives. Such a, what a blessing she was. And I was so bad, wanted to get out and talk to her mom and dad when they left, um, when they finally came out, but... While they were coming out, this guy came in between his car and my car and went to get in. And I turned, and he had this full-size lizard on his shoulder, which kind of freaked me out. Um, so they went by before I could stop and talk to him. But uh, the dragon's always around. So we're going to go ahead and continue our worship with the giving of our gifts. As I say to you every week, giving is part of our worship. 
Um, it's part of what we do to uh, show our love and de- devotion to the Lord. Um, and it's also what we do out of obedience and put ourselves in a position to receive the full blessing and protection of God. When we are obedient. He always is our shield and, and uh, fortress. So we're going to go ahead. Worship team will take our positions. Um, if those of you at home, if you don't have some place to sow your, your giving into, find a Bible-believing uh, ministry and sow into that. So let's go ahead and continue our worship. like to stand. We are going to worship the Lord together this morning. Yeah, there's so many voices out there telling you one thing and another, and you can get really confused. You can be, become frightened. Uh, but I don't know about you, but I'm choosing to listen to the Lord this morning. Amen. 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 I said now news report
as long as we are able. As long as we have breath. We will declare your goodness to the nations. Lord, you have been good in times of sorrow. In times of famine. In times of brokenness. You have been good times of prosperity and of joy. You have been good. Lord, we bless your holy name and give you all the glory and adoration. In Jesus' name, all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated. God good. You know, as a pastor, there's lots of different things to do. Some measure responsibility over. And from time to time, you release your pulpit, if you would, to somebody else. We are told in, in Revelation that we will be saved by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And uh, 
giving testimony is something that is part of the Christian faith, sharing what God has done for you. Uh, and many times we get concerned and afraid and frightened because we feel like we have to explain all the theology of God. And we do not. Our testimony is simple. This is what God, this is my life for Jesus Christ. This is my life now. With him. Um, you have heard me in the past talk about our brother Earl. What a blessing he is to have him. How God miraculously brought him here. Earl was a quiet. In fact, a few weeks ago we had prayer here. That's Earl. So when Earl came to me and said, Jeff, I really feel like I need to teach you something. I said, okay, do you like me? Me? You mean like on Wednesday night? He looked at me and said, no, I can't do that. Now, I will be honest with you. When people come in and want to share, part of your responsibility is to say, okay, is this God? Is this a now word or is this a later word? Now words are now. God says something and you do it now. But God also says things that don't take place for years. I could tell it was a now word. Okay. Let's, let's do this. Get ready. You know. And to show you how much of a God thing this is, I, uh, we had set a date and uh, I got to look calendar, and we have summertime vacations and whatnot, and we had a couple of families that were going to be out, and he was supposed to speak. I said, Earl, any way you can do this earlier. Now, again, for those of you who don't speak regularly, it's scary enough when you said, hey, can you do it earlier? And he didn't bat an eye. I said, yeah, I, I, we can do that. So I am uh, excited. Earl, if you want to come up and uh, just share with the Lord out of your heart. More than go ahead and play a song I had. more than all. Um, let's pray a little here. Dear Father, Lord and Savior, I come to you this morning to give you thanks and all the glory.
for all you have done for me and continue to show me as you lead me on the path that you prepared for me. Amen. I'm here this morning to give praise, glory, and thanks to our Father, our God, and share with you how Jesus has totally changed my life inside and out. This Sunday marks the second year anniversary that Jesus guided me to this church and wonderful family. Yes, I said guided. I was headed to another church up the street that morning. A voice in my head said, turn in here, this church. I did. And I'm so glad I did. Jeremiah 29, 13 tells us, and you will seek me and find me when you search, with me, search for me with all your heart. How true that is. The song that was just played, I heard years ago, and it's been a while, but after I came here, this song was, came up and it just stayed with me. Couldn't get it out of my head. And I'd loved the song, but had no idea it would link Jesus and myself. So as it starts out, the song starts, I was troubled in my mind and had reached my darkest time when my life and my spirit was low. This was so true two years ago. I hit bottom of a pit that I called my life. It was so dark. I did not know who I was. Excuse me. Or what I was doing. I had thoughts of finding a way out. When I walked in this church, I was greeted lovingly by everybody. Thank God for that. I know now. I knew of God, but was not prepared for what happened next. That morning, as Pastor Jeff spoke, it seemed to echo in my head, like he was speaking directly to me, truly pointing out things going on in my life. Let me tell you, it scared me. No offense, Pastor Jeff. <laughs> I remember at the end of the service getting up with tears in my eyes and hit it out the door. I got to my truck, and as I got in my truck, it was Kurt. Thank you, Jesus, for sending Kurt just to let me know that somebody cared. I was touched that day by the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. Oh. Oh. Bear with me. When I got home, I began reading the Bible. I was amazed. I was understanding some of it. That is something I, I was not able to do before. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Spirit. Now, once I finally got in my head, our God is a speaking God, and he was talking to me. <laughs> that took about three weeks. I remember Pastor Jeff saying, I thought we was moving on this week, but someone still needs to hear this. And about the same time, some strange things took place in my life. Let's say God got my attention and moved into my heart. I felt this need to learn more about Jesus. So I came to Bible study. Remind you, I didn't know Jesus, just like the song says. With the end drawing near, I had no more to fear, for I have never known him at all. And I had questions. Like Thomas, I had doubts. And in my mind, it was still a dark and emotional mess. I remember the first night of Bible study, Pastor Jeff took a verse of, and gave each one of us a word to pray on and see what the Holy Spirit would tell us or bring to us in our mind. I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. The word I got was I. Now my brain started saying, really? I? That's not a word, that's a letter. <laughs> but I prayed and was given two words by the Holy Spirit. But at the time, I was not sure what or how it even came to me. The first word was believe. And the second word was to do. Pastor Jeff told me, hold on to those. I have. 
Now we all know that God meets, meets you where you are at. And this was my starting point with him. Thank you, Lord, for all the love and patience. Now I found as I believed more in God, I would hear and would be shown verses that would directly in what I was questioning and what thoughts was going through my mind and things happening in my life. He is amazing God to the God that we serve. Amen? The first change or gift that Jesus gave me is peace. In John 14, 27, we read, Peace I leave you with. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let them let him let them be afraid. I was still an emotional mess and was finding his peace was when excuse me, I was still an emotional mess, but was finding his peace when everything was exploding around me. Thinking of this verse somehow calmed me and amazingly believing in Jesus brings us to him. It's closer. The more you reach, the more he comes. Then we studied the book of James. I know everybody joked about how long it was taking to get through. But Jesus showed me so much and I was changed as we studied this book. One of the verses that made a big change in me was James 1.19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. I was reading this verse a couple of times a day. The Holy Spirit was trying to show me something. I was not getting it. I told myself, I listen. I know I listen. Then God's light shone through all the emotion. My emotional mess, I did not listen at all. I'd hear the first few words. Hold on. Where did I, I got myself lost here. My hardened heart was full of fear, and it kept me on a defense. So I was hearing the first few words and thinking of a reply, and my anger was building. Thank you, God, for showing me this. Now I listen, keeping an open mind to see where the other person's point of view is. In doing this, and there's the do, I found myself even more at peace with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. At this point, I was seeing God at work in my life. But he was just getting started. And I, like most people, I prayed, wanted him just to move me out of this season and put me where everything would be great. But this was not his will. So on to the next step Jesus had for me. Self-control and taming of my tongue. In James 3.3, 3, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts, considered what great force is set on fire by a small spark. As I dwelled on this verse, I found for me that others, others could set a small spark, and I in return would dump gas on it until I was out of control. As I prayed for help, I was guided to the book of Proverbs where God gave me wisdom and knowledge and with understanding I have been able to gain more self-control. Thank you God for all you teach me. Pastor Jeff has been teaching us about God gives us steps to follow on a path without fear. God has it planned out for us. And it's at God's perfect time. The hard part for me is the unknowing and the waiting. I could go on and on for there is many more aha moments and the Holy Spirit has shown me and I could share. But we need to move on. So the next part of the song, it says, For the rest of my days, God will show me the way since his messenger has entered my life. 
At this point, I'm like, that's good. I'm good with that. I can deal with that. Next part of the song comes, I'm part of his plan for salvation of man as I walk in this circle of life. At this time, I had some friends that were in some troubled times. And the Holy Spirit was reaching out to me to reach out to them. I was saying, no, no, not going to do it. I'm not the right person. Not where I'm at in my life. I have no point to try to reach out to these people. He didn't give up. He kept saying and kept wanting me to go, and I kept saying no. And looking back, you now learning through the Bible, it's kind of like Moses telling him, you know, find somebody else. And we know what happened to Moses. So here I stand, and you kind of get the idea of just some of this. Um, so I gave in and obeyed him. And the strange thing, I did nothing. He would show me, the Spirit would show me a verse or a note, a little note of something, and who I was supposed to pass this on to. And as I passed it on, I made sure that they knew that it was coming from the Holy Spirit. It wasn't me. I don't have that much sense to be able to pick this stuff up out of the Bible and read to know that much. Somehow, I was able to share with them. In Second Corinthians, first chapter, verse three and four, blessed be, excuse me, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with we ourselves are comforted by God. Amen. Didn't understand that at all. But as I was putting this together, the Spirit showed me this, and it was like, yes, I understand. You allowed me to pass your word on and help. From what was comforting me, they found comfort also. Now, God used me for his good when I didn't think I was worthy of doing anything. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 19, 26. Here we are. Jesus looked at them and said, with man, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. He made me total believer that he can have me stand up here in front of you this morning and say this. Anything is possible. It's not something I've battled with this. I've talked to Carrie because I know she went through it. Same time when she gave her word about Moses. I found that the more I try not to do what he wants to do and I kick it along, he just keeps talking along and don't fight him. You'll, you'll be better off not to. Save yourself some worry. So here in the past month or so, the Holy Spirit has been in my heart to share my story. I've tried doing it my way. It doesn't work that way. By telling some friends and some family and sharing. Then the Holy Spirit took me on a life trip, as I call it. I prayed one morning and was sitting in a chair and just being quiet. As he showed me, as I said before, I knew of God, but I didn't know Jesus or anything. And as I sat there in a the chair quiet, the Holy Spirit played my life back, showing me where he had been with me through all the difficult times. When I was about five, I had to deal with I liked to smell gasoline. And I got into a little shed where it was stored at, and I leaned over the can, and I sniffed it till I passed out. Somehow, I'm still here. 
And we go for it till I turned 18 and got my driver's license and my own car and I'm out riding around and had some friends and driving a little questionable. I ran into a fence and put my head through the windshield. In, or actually had a bump on my head, a few scratches, broken windshield. Still didn't put it together. He's there. Now we go a little further as I got in my 20s and liked to partake of alcohol at the time. I drank it like it wasn't going to be made tomorrow. At one time, I would drink a half a gallon and a case of beer within two evenings. So I had hit to a point, um, even being so much as being in a hospital one night, waking up with the doctor looking at me going, I don't know why you're waking up. Your blood alcohol is over 3%. You should be dead. And mm, I remember for some reason me going, okay, so where's my clothes so I can get home? Still didn't get to it. Still drinking. Probably about six months later, I was in another one of my drinking and pass out type things. In during the night while I was passed out, and I've written it off as it was just being too much alcohol, I had a visit from my father. Now, my father passed away a few months before I was born, so I've never seen my dad, only in pictures. As he sat at the foot of my bed and told me I needed to straighten myself up, that I had my mom to take care of and stuff to do in my life, I did start to straighten myself up. I quit drinking. But I still didn't understand that that was God. So, but as we go on, and the decisions that I've made, and I've not made the ones that he wanted, the chose paths that I wanted to take. Until I came here that Sunday morning, I was reaching out. I was at the bottom, knew no more to turn. He brought me here. And he's changed my life in so many ways. I tell you, my, my world that I live in has not changed. The stress, the strain, everything's there. But Jesus in my heart has changed me that I'll never go back. My life is, even though I didn't see him, hear him, answer him, he's still there. Thank you, Jesus, for not giving up on me. All the glory to you. You are why I'm here. I know you have great plans for my future. As long as I follow you on the path that you've laid out for me. Now moving on to the last part of the song. Nevermore will I doubt what my life's all about. No more will I suffer despair. Praise God. I got proof he's alive, for he's let me survive. And I know he's made a home for me there. Thank you, Father. I give you praise, thanks, and all the glory all the blessings that you give. Excuse me, I'm lost where I was at. Oh, there, I missed that. All right. A little, little prayer here. God, my Father in heaven, 
I give you praise. Thanks and all the glory. I thank you for all the blessings you give. The ones I see, but the greater ones I don't even realize that are happening. I thank you for your love that you flood me with till it pours out of me onto others. I thank you for the trials and troubles for you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to overcome them and be more like your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I pray. So that's pretty much the inside picture of how he's changed me, and it's an ongoing work. Over the past two years, it's been a struggle, and I appreciate everybody here that's reached out to me. It's meant so much. So the two years ago when I came here, I said inside and out. I was a little bit bigger, as most of y'all know. And I'll show you a picture here of one of my friends I used to hang around with a good bud. Bob's a big boy. Um, I've lost 170 pounds by God's grace. I've never been able to. He put me in contact with a, a group and a coach that's been great. She's prayed with me and helped get me through when things were going on. And as we end up with this, to say thank you, Jesus, I got another song that's um, by the Plowboys, and it's titled, No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. Thank you all for listening to what I had to say this evening. I would love to tell you God's his glory for what he's done in Earl's life and his willingness to share it. Thank you. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true, I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my life was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed a strong and loving arms around me. And he's showing me the way I Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Until someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. No one else could 
take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for you. That's another reason I love Earl. We're bluegrass brothers, too. Clearly, Earl is physically half the man he was a few years ago. But spiritually, he is multiple. I don't know if it's you here or you at home. Did you notice that God came to Earl even before Earl knew who he was? Earl's lost his dad when he was three. My father was three. There's a wound. You know, people say that parents are never supposed to outlive their children. And that's true. But a child who is born without a parent suffers a great wound as well. And counseling, therapy, grace. It can help you cope. Only God brings healing. Earl shared. He argued. It's his life. You can't tell him he's wrong. He's experienced it. Whatever your wound is, we all have it. Our God wants to heal your wound. He wants to give you more than just a coping mechanism. Whether we find it in alcohol, whether we find it in, in promiscuous relationships or whatever. That's like putting numbing agents on a gaping wound. He wants to bring healing. Thank you, Earl, for the willingness to to share and bear your soul here. And I hope and pray that all of you and watching at home as well heard about the God who can bring hope in the most desperate of situations. And I hope that you are willing to do what Earl did. You see, all of the all those years that God was going, Hey Earl, over here. It took the time when he said, hey, Earl, turn in here. In obedience. To put himself in a position to receive the healing, protection, and provision of God. Too many of us today want all of those things without the obedience part of it. He wants us to come to him. He said, hey, bring your stinky, dirty mess. We'll, we'll get through it together. Thank you, Earl. Let's just go ahead and, and pray, um, and uh, I hope and pray, and again, I'm going to say this because I believe the Spirit's just chunking up that. The one part he said about James about slow to speak, be quick to listen, slow to be angry. There's a few of us here this morning who struggle with that. Probably more than a few of us. I love the fact that Earl said, I, I'm a progress getting better at it. Sometimes we revisit that. We just need to step back. So let's seek God for our own needs this morning. Amen. Lord, we bless you and thank you for the testimony of the saints. Lord, we get caught up in confusion with debating and arguing whether God speaks in this way or this only way or The reality is you change lives you change eternities people we'll just listen and we we'll just come to you 
I thank you, Lord, for Earl's transparency. He didn't tell us, oh, I came to Jesus and all my life got better immediately. None of my, all my problems went away. No, he said the problems, many of them still remain. Part of living in this world. But he found an anchor. He found a source of joy in the midst of trouble in you. And that's what you offer each and every one of us. Lord, I pray for those who are listening here in person and at home. You love each and every one of us. You don't love Earl any more than you love somebody else. You love us way beyond what we can even understand and imagine and every one of us. You're not a respecter of persons, but you are a respecter of faith. When we step out in faith, you step in. I thank you, Lord, for the truth that Earl displayed when he talked about dealing with his own issues first. Things the Lord sh- showed him about his own life. Lord, the first couple words and then thinking, oh, that struck me. Would you want to give us delivery and and healing and victory? And some of those things require surgery of the heart to remove the cancer, to remove the poison. We come to you. We come to you. Cry out to him. He will meet you. He will speak to you. He is a speaking God. We are listening. We have ears to hear. We bless you. Lord, we thank you for Earl's testimony to the the fellowship that we have in the body of Christ. Lord, these days we can have a doctor's visit without ever leaving our home. We can get a college education in our kitchen. We can go to the store and order all of our groceries and everything else in our home. And those are blessings. And we can meet with you wherever we are. Lord, the reality is that there is something needful in every human in the experience of loving one another, caring for one another, shouldering each other's burdens and, and crosses. Encouraging. Lord, help us to find our place in the body of Christ to connect with. Thank you that Earl's part of our body, our family. Lord, for every need that's out there, you are the all sufficient one. Lord, this morning we spoke against the spirit of confusion. You have released your prisoners. Cry out for the mind of Christ. Cry out for the wisdom of God. We thank you, Father God. We thank you, Lord, to hear this morning the spirit of depression, of fear, anger, have all released their prisoners because of your word. Jesus. Lord, now I just ask that we like Earl would do the do part. 
I need to believe. I need to do. I need everyone here and at home. May we walk in obedience. Give you glory. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you guys. We're going to say bye to you guys at home this Wednesday night, 7 p.m. here at 29 Carroll Track Road in Metropolitan Downtown Fairfield. Love to have you join us. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Men's Promise Keepers Conference. Uh, going to be epic. So God bless you. We love you. Hope to see you soon. And we are.